Ha, so you kind of felt that this one was coming, didn't you? Yesterday, we made a video talking about Detroit Red Wings forward Alex Debrinkit and how he, in my opinion, and in the opinions of many other Wings fans, especially via the comment section, felt that he had been disappointing this season. Now, of course, Debrinkit has his spot in the Red Wings lore because he was a former Chicago guy, a former Ottawa guy. Most of his NHL success came alongside of one Patrick Kane, who was also a Detroit Red Wing, and who's on an expiring contract that takes him till the end of the season, and who does not have a contract for next year, at least at the time of recording this audio. If by the time this video is published and he actually signs an extension, okay, then I'll take the bullet and I'll say that I was wrong. But for right now, I don't think things are going to change. Because in this video, I wanted to talk about Patrick Kane and his future. He did have some comments the other day, which I thought were interesting to note about. And this also gives us a very odd discussion point in regards to the Wings and the rest of their roster because of how Patrick Kane has been playing. So, Kane is 35 years old, still the same 5'10", 176 pound left-handed right winger, and this season playing for the Detroit Red Wings, he's got 44 points in 46 games played. That is just under a point per game, that's just around half a goal a game. He has been one of the best players on the team when it comes to pure offense, and when you take a look at some of the metrics of the team as a whole, Lucas Raymond leads the Wings in points with 64 in 78 games. Dylan Larkin has 62 points. He's second. Debrinkit, Goss, Despair are third and fourth. And then you have yourselves Patrick Kane, who is fifth on the Wings in overall points and who is fourth on the team in overall goals. Long story short, Patrick Kane has been one of the most valuable players on the team, especially when you consider his contract. He's making 2.75 mil. The fact is, he may not be making that amount of money next year per season because he's already proven to everybody with this stint in Detroit that his recovery from the surgery was fine. But I wanted to turn your attention to this video posted on Twitter by Brad Golly. Now, he's the sports director at WXYZ Detroit TV, and he posted this Twitter video of Patrick Kane and what he has thought about in regards to his time on the wings so far. Take a look at this video. Patrick Kane says that he hasn't thought about where he'll play next season, but he's thankful for his time in Detroit so far. Nothing but positive things to say, he said. It's been great being a wing and playing at LCA and the way the fans have embraced me. Now, some of the replies go out there and say, oh, there's a lot of subtext here. Ooh, very interesting, very interesting. Alexa, the first reply here says, I really hope he believes in the team enough to stay. It's been so great to watch him play. The wings will get there. And one of the things that I wanted to bring up in regards to this small comment where Kane says he doesn't really know what he's going to do next season, he hasn't thought about his future, but he's thankful for Detroit so far, is that a good chunk of Wings fans that I'm seeing on social media are pretty much believing that Kane's time in Detroit is going to be done. Now, we have had our few conversations over the year as to whether or not that would actually happen, because we recognize that the fact that he even signed with Detroit in the first place was a pretty big deal. Stevie Y and the rest of the Red Wings health staff, they did their extensive research. They checked in with Kane continuously. Kane said he liked and appreciated that Detroit was willing to do that for him. They signed the contract. He liked being in Detroit, and he likes playing with DeBrinkett, of course. But heading into next season... This is where things get a little bit interesting, because he does need a contract and he likely will get a raise. But the question is, would he want to stick around with Motown next season to hopefully get him back to Stanley Cup Championship territory? Here's a comment made on the Detroit subreddit in regards to this Patrick Kane thing. The sad part is, this Red Wings team isn't where they are now without him. He's fourth on the team in goals and has played 30 fewer games. It's kind of concerning to think about, to be honest. Another reply goes out there and says, Really, I have no idea if this means anything or not. On one hand, that's a pretty diplomatic answer that makes me think he doesn't have a real interest in returning. Although, I really don't think he'd flat out say he wants to come back if he did. I wouldn't blame Kane if he went elsewhere, but I hope we do what we can to keep him here. It means, I don't have a contract for next year, I'm not going to say anything that would give this team or any other team leverage over my new deal. 
And that also is a very reasonable way to perceive these Kane comments as well, where it's like, yeah, I don't want to commit to anything. I don't want to say that I want to come back because that would make it easier for the Red Wings to lowball me because if they know I'm interested in staying around, then hey, they might force me to take some dollars off. And I don't want to do that because I'm in the second half of my career. Everything's riding off into the sunset. This may be one of the last contracts I ever sign in the NHL, and I could get myself a significant raise because of my talent. So there is bargaining power here that would be created or dismantled depending on Kane's perceived interest in the media. If he says he wants to come back, then okay, the wings have leverage. If he says he doesn't want to come back, then it makes it a little bit more difficult to predict what happens. But of course, ambiguity leads to a whole bunch of discussion, and that's kind of why we're talking about this here. Would Kane actually be interested in coming back? Either options would be plausible, but the comments that we had read don't really give any fuel to hope for the best. Because he's just saying, yeah, I'm not going to speak out for next year. I've liked it here so far, but I'm not going to talk about next season for now. And you have to start wondering as well, because Kane is as good as he is, and he has been outspoken about wanting to be competitive, and he wants to win, this and that, we already talked in the last video yesterday about how Alex Dabrinkit has been very disappointing. If Patrick Kane is not able to find that same magic to end off the season with Dabrinkit, and if he doesn't believe that magic is still there into the offseason and beyond, does Kane have a reason to stay in Detroit? Other than the fact that the Wings and Kane had a really good relationship to start things off in the 2023 late period, which is kind of why he even signed in the first place, because there was such a good pitch to get him on to Detroit in the first place, now that he's on the team and he's one of the best players despite only playing half the games, do you think an incentive exists where Kane is like, okay, I went to Detroit, they weren't as good as I thought they'd be, this team was not able to win as many games as I thought they could, a lot of this talent just did not manifest on the ice in the ways that we had expected, especially compared to what we believe they're capable of. So if they underperformed, does that give Kane the reason to leave Detroit in free agency and sign with another team? There probably would be a New York or some other team out there that would be interested in Patrick Kane's services and maybe is able to sign him to a little bit more. And if it's already a squad where Kane doesn't need to be the number one guy, maybe it's easier for him. Who really knows? When he was on New York, he had so many other talents where if Kane didn't show up, it was fine. He did show up, but even if he didn't, you still had names like Sabanajad, Kreider, Panarin, at the time Vladimir Tarasenko, all there too. And unfortunately, a core of Larkin, Raymond, Debrinkent just doesn't have the same stopping power as those New York guys from last year. So if Kane wants a bigger chance at winning, whilst being able to play on a team that does not necessarily need him to be the best guy possible, then maybe he does leave. Who really knows? So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Detroit Red Wings and Patrick Kane. Three questions for you here. Firstly, his contract next season. What is the AAV amount on a guy like Patrick Kane, who is wrapping up a point-per-game campaign with the Red Wings where he was one of the best players and he kind of needed to be to help this team get results? What are your thoughts on how he's able to bounce back from the surgery and does that reflect nicely in the dollar amount he gets next year? Other questions, where does he sign next season? Is that with the Detroit Red Wings? And third question, do you think his connection with Alex Dabrinkit is enough to bring him back to Detroit? Because... One of his main goals was to be competitive and win a Stanley Cup. If the Wings are not in that position next year, you could debate there's reason for him not to stay. This team kind of needed Patrick Kane to be good. But if he goes over to another playoff team that can already be good and be a playoff team without Kane, then what do you think is more attractive of an option to him? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Patrick Kane and this entire conversation about his return, potentially, to Detroit. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to listen to the video of Kane talking about his future in the locker room as well, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section either way. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 9 and bye.